What is up, you guys? It's 2024. Let's go. <laughs> Happy New Year to each mm-hmm. and every one of you. We hope you guys had an amazing holiday with your loved ones, yep. friends, and family mm-hmm. back at home. But it is what our first podcast of the year our first podcast of the year yeah buddy and year number three of the tcr podcast no Mm -hmm. is it Mm -hmm. there's no way well we we don't have three years here but we have this is year number three season three let's say about to go into yeah year three for sure hold on i'm organizing this because um i did a little setup uh change up here i had a little more up lights this is not this is not the revamped tcr podcast studio for sure but i changed it up a little i kind of wanted to give it a different vibe it kind of reminds me of how we started right yeah but acuérdate you were supposed to leave the christmas tree up until los reyes de los magos (laughs) for real let me know down below how long do you guys leave your christmas tree yeah if mando could he would leave it up until february yes or no yeah what's the plan when are we taking it down as soon as you're ready well lately our the past two years we take it down before the tree burn Mm -hmm. at rancho which is like mid January, right? Mid January, yeah, yeah. So yeah, we it might be coming down soon. After Hopefully, our- we go. Hopefully, they wait for us because we're yeah. gonna be out of town the weekend that the rumors are being said. In case you don't know what I'm talking about, um, you guys know that we go mudding as much as we can, even though we don't as much as we want, right? <laughs> How many times do you think we went last year? Three, probably like three, four times. That's crazy. Casi nada. Casi huh? nada, bro. And we were here, mm-hmm. but we always had something to do. But regardless, which is a good thing. Every yeah, every year they do an annual tree burn, and there's hundreds of trees. Hundreds. The bonfire is probably as big as this house. Yeah. No, probably like yeah, two it's times. Huge. It's dangerous too, though. It's, it's like a lot of fire. Yeah. But it's surrounded by wetlands. Yeah. Um, it's an area where there's no trees at all. So it's controlled, like you said, it's, it's surrounded by a lake. So, you know, only the trees are going to burn. So don't worry, you guys. Yeah, yeah. But last year there were so mm-hmm. many, people, too many people. So it's rumored that this year they're trying to keep it on the down mm-hmm. low. So only the true ones know and all of this. But I honestly don't mind all the people like. You know, I don't go to pay attention to other people. I go to have a good time, me and my people, and that's all I care about. Yeah. Everybody else, gag to this madre, it doesn't phase me one bit, right? Yep, yep, yep. So, um, I don't know if you guys watched our latest vlog on our Christmas, Christmas, on our New Year's vlog, and how we had pozole, we had tamales, we had tostadas, but... Buñuelos. I re- buñuelos. I realized that we didn't have a taquero. Taquero? But, but we don't really need a taquero, because... Taquero mucho. You're so <laughs> dumb. What is up? <laughs> That's a bad joke of the day. We're starting 2024. A little, a little. Taquero com- mucho. Oh my God. There goes Mano with the dad jokes. <laughs> Wait, but I have. Where do you get these from? I can't tell you my secrets. Oh, I already though. know. Supersonic. <laughs> Yo, let us know down below if one day we should have Supersonic on the I'm podcast. I'm freaking down. We always refer to him. Yeah, he's down too. He's our mini producer. So he's the guy behind the scenes. We go over our podcast. We go over our topics. And uh, he helps out a lot. So I think one of these days, one of these episodes, we should have him for a little segment because it'll be interesting. And I, before we continue, I know you guys that are actually watching are thinking, Lily Bay, get chingaos trice. In front of the tea. Well, let me tell you guys, Mando was like, babe, did you grab your water <laughs> for the podcast or whatever it was that yeah. I was going to drink? Según nosotros, when we started Puro Desmadre, we were going to be drinking Cruda Realidad vibes, micheladas, nada, no sé qué. Nada. I'm always trying to be in a diet over yeah. here. But anyways, as soon as he was telling me that, I was you need a hand there, opening up this jar of pickles. And I was like, wait a minute. Why don't I eat my pickle on the podcast? By the way, this whole jar here, my mouth is literally water. Can you tell? Yes. This whole jar is mine, so I can scoop as many as I want, so don't come at me. But these are my brother's famous chamonito pickles. World famous. Because <laughs> you guys don't understand the amount of people that hit me up. And I do have a discount code with them, Lily Bay. With chamonito.com? My mouth is watering again, yeah. which people have been asking me for. But I'm going to do a little ASMR. So if you don't like ASMR, just put the volume down for two seconds. Are you ready? By the way, these are homemade. Like he does not buy pre-made pickles and add his brine. No, no. 
And if someone is serious about their craft, These are it's chamoinito. Cucumbers that he makes into pickles. Yeah. And then and makes, adds his brine to it. And then makes the michelada mix. Makes his michelada mix. Adds it in here. You're probably thinking, like, ill, that maybe does not sound good to you that if you don't like micheladas. But if you do like micheladas, try this. Try this. You ready? A ver. Ala. <laughs> that sounds crunchy. You know what I just thought about? Does it make your mouth water or not? Yeah, but no se me antoja. Mando like, does not like pickles, yeah. I don't know why. But you are the girl, maybe the person that goes crazy for pickles. Like, if, if someone is selling pickles at, at a store, at a restaurant, you're gonna definitely going to try the pickles. See or no? Yeah, extra pickles. Wait, 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 wait. You do like pickles. Yeah, fried well, we, pickles. No, no, no. When you go get a sandwich, you be like, extra pickles. Oh, yeah, that's right. But what, you only like, like the slice? <laughs> no, yeah, what? I mean... You just you just love pick you just love pickles twenty four seven so exageras but I'm not gonna lie those are really good mm -hmm. um, but my brother he was actually he actually telling We're still me crunching sorry that um, mm -hmm. we I I watch I watch another podcast right? dot com by the way I watch another podcast and pretty much um, they bring cooks they bring chefs into the show and literally give them plates of food while they podcast and then they kind of interview the chef for like you know two three minutes and i think that'll be a good little segment for chamonito you know we he brings us for pickles. anybody that wants to bring us food yeah he, <laughs> he brings us pickles he's bringing us a michelada he kind of tells us how it's done and all that and i think it'll be super interesting i wonder how he came up with this because at the time i know that i see it a little bit more now but at the time me myself that i'm out there in the content world had not seen michelada yeah. pickles ever. Um, so not only can you eat them like that and then drink the juice. Look, my mouth is watering as I talk, <laughs> bro. But you can also make yourself a michelada with this brine and add, michel and add some pickles to your michelada. Like it's my friends are obsessed. Mm -hmm. Melissa, Melissa texts me. She has like a million something followers, right? Sends me a audio of if I can tell my brother... To send her pickles. And by the way, she's Melissa the Pickle, and she don't even like pickles. The she said, can you tell Nito to send over some pickles, the chamoy pickles? Please, I'm craving them. It only shows, shows me that a little bit on the screenshot. Uh, not us having a full Anyways, segment of sorry, pickles. I'm just saying. <laughs> it's because I was like, oh, I might as well take them so they can yeah. know. Because I'm like, I talk about them on my lives, but never on... Mm -hmm. On the Never podcast, on the this is the first time, right? I think you would think you would think I'm the worst. I'm sorry, 70 episodes later, babe, and they are inches. worth it. Oh my god, yeah, it literally weighs like a pound, pound and a half. Pepinos, it's so good, yeah. And the beautiful thing about it is that his mix, you literally just have to buy the mix, put it into, in, into your beer, and done. Yeah, you don't have to buy any extra shit, so yeah. that's badass. And we've had a lot of michelada mixes a lot yes Trust or us, no we have and i love micheladas yeah, this is top tier so, top but everybody line. likes micheladas different yeah the micheladas that i like are spicy mm -hmm. not too thick not too thick because yeah. a lot of people put like a lot of clamato and it's just like straight thick mm -hmm. i don't explain it so i like it spicy lemony yeah salty right mm -hmm. some of them need salt bro and i'm not even a salt person like that Spicy, lemony, salty. I think that's like my perfect. Yeah. yeah. Right? And a good amount of beer. Because sometimes it's puro clamato, I, yeah. I feel like Nitos, I could put a little bit and I'm good yeah. with it. Or if I want it to be a little more michelada mix, like on the days that I'm cruda and I don't want a beer, but I want that flavor, I add a lot more. Your mouth is watering, huh? <laughs> I'm going to get some right now. On the break, though, because I don't want to crunch again. I'm telling <laughs> but uh, episode 70, babe. We are 70 episodes into this podcast. to get away from me because I'm yeah, just Yeah, yeah, yeah. Calmate. 70 episodes. Uh -huh. So interesting fact of the number 70. Jackie Chan turned 70 this year. <gasps> Oprah turned 70 this year. No! That's crazy, right? That's crazy. Cholos. Ooh, what about them? You're a cholo lover, right? No. You... I love you. Nah, but so Cholos, um, I kind of did a little research. I ran through some things on TikTok and I figured out why Cholos are called Cholos. It comes from the word Cholo Esquinkles, which is the dog. And since the dog is bald head, they call the Cholos Cholos. What? And Esquinkles, have you heard kids being called Esquinkles? No. Yeah, so in Mexico, they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh, yes, so Esquinkles is because the dog 
is um, in the calle y es muy travieso. So that's pretty much why mm. little kids in Mexico are okay. called escuinclas. So that's a fun fact, that's Mexican cool word know. of the day yeah, and yeah, why yeah. cholos are cholos. And I think because cholo, the cholo dog is always in the calle and the cholo, cholo yeah, yeah, yeah. is in the, in the streets too, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I personally love the cholo culture, not the violent part yeah. of it. Like, because not, not just because they dress like one or bald and have tattoos that doesn't make them a bad person we have a bunch of friends that are the cholo vibes mm -hmm. all super cool all down to come help and yeah I, I really love that but tell them a little bit about you babe did you have a cho i feel like all mexicans had a little cholo face a little cholo yeah or chola my face. cholo face goes back to my middle school days when like spm um little rob all, you know mm -hmm. all that was popping um my brother actually introduced me to that he was purchasing the dickies so i had a pair of dickies i had the pur purple i had the blue ones purple the, the navy blue ones i had the khaki ones and i had the black ones and i had the full set you know with the jacket yeah, Not, yeah. Well, but then know. what happened that's the part i want what you to what happened with what Get, get. Oh, well, then the I think the Hollister era started. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm asking. You what can are you get asking? into that too, but... No te dejaba vestir casi? Oh, my mom did not like it. She thought that was for the streets. She thought I was going to start selling drugs. <laughs> she thought I was going to start robbing people, and she would literally not let us so wear So she would, it, like, know? throw them away or what? At, at a point, she would... Well, at the end of the day, she was buying our clothes, you know, because I was, what, 10, 12? I don't know. And... Mm -hmm. She was buying it for us, but I guess she gave up. She was like, ah, no pasa nada. And we ended up, you know, rocking bueno, it regardless. Uh -huh. Because there was a store. Well, back in Belle Glade, there really isn't somewhere to purchase clothes. We got to go to West Palm, which is 45 minutes away. And who else is going to take us other, other than my mom, you know? Mm -hmm. So we would go to the store and be like, beg my mom to buy us these dickies. And fortunately, she would buy them. I would you why. rock some nowadays? I haven't purchased some in a while, but yeah. I, I bought some, you know, the ones I have upstairs. Yeah, yeah. I they still haven't worn them. You haven't worn them at all? I haven't. It's because in the, the khaki summer, ones, right? No, they're they're actually the dark blue, the OG color. Um, the in the summer I'm like, it's too hot for them. Like okay. it's a dark color. I do not like wearing dark colors in the in the summer at all. And then now that it got a little colder, I haven't thought about it. But I mm. could wear them. Mm, I'm gonna come out in my chola vibes <laughs> tomorrow. Uh, but yeah, I feel like, let me know down below if you guys went through that cholo or chola phase. Mm -hmm. I definitely. You definitely did. Definitely Like how many did. years did you have your chola phase? You know what? I think it started low key without me knowing that term or that culture at all. Mm -hmm. It started like when I was like in fourth grade. Mm -hmm. Fourth. So Damn, I was like fourth grade. eight, eight, nine. But because I didn't like dresses, I, and still to this day, hated dresses at the okay. time hated dresses hated um when my mom would dress us like girly i was mm -hmm. always like more of a tomboy so i would i would i would not be attracted to that clothes mm -hmm. i would fall more towards like, like boy. pants and baggy pants yeah. and t-shirts you're like more of a tomboy please yeah i would wear actually flare pants también but that was rare mm -hmm. so once i got into my middle school years um I, I was so tomboy that one time my mom from fourth grade, my birthday on fourth grade, she made me dress like, you know, a girly girl or whatever. I literally snuck clothes in my backpack Aww. and changed into <laughs> clothes at school to be more like hip and tomboyish. Hold on. Okay. Y luego de repente que me llega she mi pulls ma, up on jamás you. en la vida has she brought touching. cupcakes for my birthday. <laughs> what? And that year that I decided to change in the bathroom, her and Nettie pull up with cupcakes. You're like, ah, oh, And my mom's face was pissed, bro. Did like, she put you out in the she, middle of the no, class? No, no, she didn't tell me nothing. Oh, when I badass. came up to her, she's that's like, más vale respect. que vayas de camias right now. So you changed twice. <laughs> so I had to go back in the bathroom and change it to my freaking girly huh? girl on stuff. On your birthday. On my birthday, bro. Damn. Hey, that's I hated that shit. I hated. That's why there, there's like it's oh my mom, my me, my bro. There was even a phase that I believe it or not, I was the tallest in my class. No, nah. I swear to God, until like sixth, seventh grade. ¿Y qué te pasó? Luego ya me quedé. <laughs> but I was at this height, yeah, seventh grade, and that's for example, little Rudy's height. Yeah. Little Rudy, you see that's him crazy. taller yeah. than everybody else, right? Um, so I was like for my age at like. 
third, fourth, fifth grade, I was like tall and skinny and scrawny. Yeah. And then my mom would put these big old poofy dresses on me. <laughs> that shit was horrible, bro. Horrible. And oh my God. That's why I never post pictures of that era because it's That's hilarious. It's really bad, right? But anyways, so leading into middle school when I could finally do as I please a little more, um, and there was no uniforms. That's when I and I learned a little bit more about the cholo culture. That's when I definitely went in it more. Like at school, I would rock it in middle school. Yeah. I was barely starting to buy stuff, but not so much. It still wasn't a thing yet for me, but I was starting to learn about it, right? But getting into high school when I finally knew, oh, I could get them online, I could get them mm-hmm. at this store, I get them at that store. That's when I went in. You're like, like I would wear Dickies so that to school kills. all the time. Yeah. It wasn't like every day, but it was a lot. So it was only like a handful of us. It was myself, a homegirl, Giselle, and Yvette. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, Yvette didn't go to my school. Never mind. It was just me and my homegirl, Giselle. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, Rocking crazy. Dickies. Yeah. And the thing with the long belts. The thing that sucked for my um, elementary, middle school, and high school is that uniform fo- followed me throughout my whole Even fucking- high school? Yes. So I know elementary school is for sure. And then they did a transition in middle school to wear uniforms, right? Mm. For some reason. And then they did another transition right when I joined high school, Glade Central um, High School. I would have quit school. Literally. <laughs> freaking. Um, and then it got so strict in 10th grade that you couldn't even wear a black tee under it. I was going to say, are uniforms still a thing yet, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Which I don't mind. I mean, if I'm a dad or, or, or you know, a parent, I don't mind it because you Hell literally, yeah, that it's makes, so easy. It makes life so easy. That makes life a you know? lot easier, yeah. But back then, I hated yeah. it, Yeah, as a bro. kid, you hate it, for hated sure. Hated it. But I think I hated it more because I went from no uniform yeah. in elementary to at the ending of my elementary, they try to incorporate it. Mm-hmm. So then you're like, what the fuck, right? And then middle school, same thing happened. No uniform, my six. And I think seventh, I don't really remember. But then eighth grade, there was uniform. And then finally high school, we were allowed to, okay. you know, do whatever. But I think that's what I hated because yeah. I was used to being able to dress myself. And then all of a sudden, you know, that part. Well, talking about dress yourself, um, let's talk about right quick of the four new Guadis hoodies. Oh. Um, I love... People are loving the colors. Mm-hmm. Like people are going crazy. They're buying four, the four sets. They're buying yeah. two. So I think it's badass. But let's talk about each one of them by itself. For okay. example, Dale con todo. Uh-huh. The, it started off with that. Yeah. That's why we named the collection Dale con todo because I I saw that phrase somewhere and I was like, yo, that is yeah. For I love 2024. I love that. For yeah. yeah, I wanted to do a collection where it was like motivational but not super motivational yeah. where it's kind of cliche to wear just like you know straight to the point and when i saw that phrase Ale con todo, i was like i love that because it's it's not like such an old school phrase it's a little it, it could be no it is old school but it could go with the now the times name, yeah. you know i'm shocked somebody hasn't said that in a corrido somewhere mm-hmm. right uh but yeah so it started off with, it started off with that yeah and then the one i have um, make out here making my parents proud. Yeah, yeah. I basically wanted like a collection that went good together. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we got a black, uh, green, like a foresty green. The brown. Uh, the brown. The it's mahogany. Oh yeah, yeah, it's like a dark mahogany brown. Yeah. yeah if that's how um, you say it, yeah. So yeah, so it started off with the dale con todo, and something that I always try to help you guys with is that some of these quotes I had already written down a long time ago. So a tip for you is if you have an idea, but you don't know how to execute it yet, yeah. write it down and one day it's going to work itself. It's going to play out. It's going to it's gonna come in perfect. So whenever I was looking through all the random quotes and sayings that I want to have for my future merch, I came across that one and I was like, yes, that's perfect. Motivating, um, Hispanic, Latino, like that's what we're knowing. A lot of people, not everyone, but a mm-hmm. lot of people... They, all they want in life is to make their parents proud, and especially yeah. in the Latino culture. So I thought that was perfect for this year. Um, 
The next one was uh, Brown and Proud. Brown and Proud, which is the one you're wearing yeah, right now. Yeah, that's the one I'm wearing right now. Because, uh, again, it, I want it to be motivational and, and for you to feel, like, empowered. And I, we're always about motivating you guys to stay proud and unidos. I mean, especially, especially us that we yeah. are Latinos and everything that we're going through nowadays with everything, everything. La Ley is in Florida with... You know, Trump at the time with the whole immigration stuff. Um, I feel like that made us as Latinos become way more proud of who we are and want to show yeah. off a little more. Like, oh, you say that we're this, this, and this. Now nah, I'm gonna show you what we are, right? Mm -hmm. So brown and proud. I really like that man. And the last one is yeah. this moment would never come again because that is a quote that I I really like. I always I always. It, try to enforce this on people, on people that think like too much of the past or they think too much in the future. Like, bro, just think about the right now. Like, are you happy right now? Like, clear your mind. Are you happy right now? Um, are you okay? Is your health okay? Are your family okay? Like, don't worry about tomorrow. Yeah. What if tomorrow never comes? What if the freaking world ends tomorrow and you were over here? Well, and, uh, of course, if it ends tomorrow and we don't know, because if we didn't know, then yeah. we're going to be going crazy. But uh, what I'm trying to say is, yeah, um, I wanted to create this collection as like an empowering, uh, uplifting. So, yeah, those are our four sweaters. And that is a collection. Yeah, Again, I wanted it to be empowering, uh, motivational for the new year and for you guys to keep your head up and keep echándole ganas mm -hmm. y, y que le den con todo. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. And 2024 is all about that. Just leave 2023 behind. We don't know if. You had a great 2023 or a bad one. We don't know. But regardless, you know, just dale con todo because yeah. that's all you have to do. That's all you have left to do. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know what's going on because I'm getting rings on my phone. There's, there's someone at our front door and we'll be right back. I said, hell yeah, I want some tacos. <laughs> I thought I was, I mean, I am full, don't get me wrong, but you know how you know that fruta doesn't yeah. get you full for long? That's me. One thing I love about our me? life oh. and just how everyone is so cool to come to our house and they just feel like at home. Yeah. I think that's so important. And, and that's I always want that, them to. You know, that's badass. They could just come here, chill for as long as they want and leave whenever they want. Yeah. So I think that's badass. Yeah. That confianza, I don't know how we did it, but it's badass. I, I love that. Um, I love, I, like Mando said, my friends randomly show up like yeah. he did right now. And he's randomly going to go bring us some tacos right now. I said, bet, you don't got to tell me twice when it comes to tacos, honey. Even though I'm going to the gym right after. <laughs> but anyways, um, yeah, I love that. I've had friends. Carmen pull up, cook yeah. for us, right? Or just randomly pull up to hang out. Yeah. Amanda, we were watching a movie the other day. I love that. I, something that Mando and I always wanted was for our house to be the chill spot. And, and it has become that. And it's the fucking chill spot, bro. Not yeah. only for the kids, but for our deals, our for dad. our parents, yeah, parents, for our friends. And yeah. I love that. And one thing that I know about your dad uh -huh. is that he he doesn't like eating anywhere. Yeah. He only likes eating at home or at his store. Correct. Um, he doesn't like staying anywhere or chilling anywhere. He He's not that type. He yeah. wants to chill at his house or at his store and that's it. But yeah. here at the house, he just feels at home. He yeah. stays here. He eats here. He'll cook out here. He'll be in the backyard. He'll so. be in the backyard walking around, looking at yeah. the land. So that's the whole vibe of the house and that's what we have established. So I think that's badass. And that's you know? what we wanted. Remember? Yeah. Like you always wanted to be like an entertaining house mm -hmm. and... Talking about entertaining, uh -huh. how was our, our New Year's party, baby? Oh, my God. Let's get into that. Oh I'm glad God. you brought it up. Um, It's a lot. It's a lot to... I mean, like I said, the <laughs> vlog is out. You guys will see the vlog. It was lit. And that's the last time that I'm going to say lit because we be saying lit a little too much. I'm sorry. We need a new word for lit. But it was a really good um party. But I was telling Lily, I was like, yo, this is one of the first parties that I feel the pressure that uh -huh. I feel the, I don't want to say stress. Yeah, I feel the stress. Uh -huh. Like, it was a lot mm -hmm. of little things going on. And it was tough. It well, was tough. It was the first time that I included Mando yeah. in the helping process. 
Because every other party that you've seen that we throw here, mm -hmm. Mando, Mando just involved a day of. Yeah, I just grab like, a hey, couple babe, things or whatever. A, yeah, I need you to go pick this up, or hey, help me pick this up, or or can you put a little uh, screw here, like little yeah. things like that. But this one, lo tenían chinga como unos dos, tres, cuatro días, yeah, right? Yeah, like three days at least. Yeah. yeah. And um, but I'm glad he was able to be a part of that because now he sees. The que es una chinga. It is. Yeah. It is. But honestly, like, I don't stress it at all. No, nah, right? I'm not, not stressed. stressed one bit. Like, I like the process. I might be with my resting bitch face as I'm doing it, but I'm just focused, right? Mm -hmm. um, because I'm excited for the outcome. Like, mm -hmm. I'm excited to make it look nice. I'm excited to have everybody um, be wild. Right. I'm, ex I'm excited for the wild factor myself. So... I don't ever stress it at all. I always try to add more and yeah. more and more. Like we started off with just a party, yeah. throwing it, right? Then we bought tables and chairs. Then I bought a tent. Then I bought marquee letters. Then I bought um, string lights yeah. to put outside. Now now I get a DJ. Now I get a group. Now I get a sparklers. Now we got bartenders. Fucking best bartenders in town, bro. <laughs> so, it's called Me Bartender. Yes. I totally recommend them. Yeah. So there, there's no leveling down from that type of party anymore. No, like no. we've been to parties yeah. here. We've been to parties in LA, Phoenix. We've been to parties. And yeah. they, we, they know how to party. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I want. Like when we throw a party, it's gonna be a party, and people are gonna know that this is a the type LA of party. party. Yeah. So whenever See, we no, no. first started partying in LA or Arizona yeah. with all the influencers, we were always so wild because obviously the amount of raza that's out there, mm -hmm. and you guys know la raza le chagana, for sure, right? So they would have mini pancake stands. They would have taquero, a taquero, tamales. a mini dessert stand, the ice cream stand. They're, they would have like so many different vendors yeah. doing so many different things that I was like, yo, why don't we have this in Florida? Mm -hmm. Right? Like, why don't we have this? Like, never in my life had I gone to a party remotely even close yeah. to that over here, right? So that's when I told myself, man, I'm going to start doing it. And... If I don't know nobody, I'm going to make yeah. somebody. So thankfully now we have, if we want a mini pancake stand, we have a mini pancake stand. If we agua want a taquero, stand. we have a taquero. If we need the aguas frescas, we have somebody to candy do that. Candy cart. If we need a candy cart, we got that. If we need the the even the shot carts, we could get that. If we, anything that I want to make the party a little extra, yeah. we can do. Which, so, now thinking about it, that shouldn't have been a we should have had a pancake cart. We should have had our waffle yeah. cart. We should have had a candy cart. The problem but we forgot. is that we're friends with yeah. everybody that that is a part of that. And that they want to party too. I want them to party. Yeah. Even when I got the bartenders, I was like, look, I know it's New Year's Eve and I know you guys are in work mode, but don't be. Mm -hmm. If you guys want to leave the bar for a little bit and go get lit or go dance or Do go it. get some food, Do it. Do it. Don't feel like you have to be here and I'm going to be like, where were you? Why aren't you here? No, no, I don't care. My friends have coolers over there. They bought bottles. They can mm -hmm. figure it out until you come back, right? But I wanted them to have a good time. And that's the same thing that I told the grupo. I had only got them for one hour. Yeah. Because I was like, they probably want to be home. <laughs> then Lorenzo. <laughs> they probably want to be home <laughs> with their families yeah. or partying with their friends, right? So I told them straight on, like, look, you guys are here an hour. But if you guys are down to do more, we're down to pay. Mm -hmm. But if you guys want to leave or if you guys want to stay and party, you guys could do as you please. Well, I actually told them, I was like, look, you guys could go home and come back at 2 or 3 a.m. We'll still be oh, here. Oh, yeah. We're going to be here till 5 a.m. So you can start playing at 2, 3 a.m. It's like, no, no, no. We're going to party. So they like yeah. the vibe. They, they love the vibe. They here you know? and they partied here yeah. with us until so fire. 5 in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> Which I didn't make it to. Mando, I'm typically the last one. One of the last ones, correct. Even after me. Yeah, you're right. I'm typically the last one no matter what. But that night... I was the last one. I was done. I was done. I had pozole all over my white outfit. Can y'all please, if y'all haven't seen the vlog, go see it. It's going to be <laughs> it's worth it. Yeah. Especially the ending. Yeah. Don't put it in the comments. Yeah, don't. don't ruin it. Just watch it. You're going to be... Laughing Ballin'. your ass off because I was 
dying okay like Mando did not want to put it on the vlog yeah, and i, I was wasn't like, gonna put it you have to it is so funny bro so i convinced them Be- it's on the vlog before we move on from that subject what was your favorite part of our new year's party your favorite like my favorite part? Well, let's say top two or three Oh my God, I want to say my family loving the bartenders, Mm -hmm. like even family, my family, you would think are super drinkers, like my older family, like my tias, you know, but they're not. My cousins are my cousins and, you know, my, my primos, my primos, my sisters, my brothers, they're all lit, right? But my tias, tias, they'll drink one or two. Yeah, so should they drink, just chill. You know, if they get drunk tipsy one day, it's very rare, right? Yeah. But I kept seeing them coming back with all these cups. And I would be like, they like it. They're it. like, oh, my God, it's so good. They were loving it. So yeah. the fact that they were, like, hype about it was hilarious. I even reposted one of my tia. She's probably, like, almost 50, you guys. Mm-hmm. She was over there twerking to, what was it? Um, I'm out here in Miami. Oh, my God. That looking song. Looking for a hoochie was, daddy. Mind you, yeah, they, they were raised here, so they know yeah. all these songs that I'm in. But... It was hilarious watching that. Um, so that was my favorite part. Mm-hmm. I, I clearly, and them taking pictures and being so, they, they were writing in the group chat, oh my God, Lily, thank you so much for such a good time. You know, whatever, stuff like that. Stuff like that is what I live yeah. for, you know. But yeah. what about you? I think um, how there was no like downtime. Like oh, there yeah. was like no, there was activities, there was the group, the DJ, and then the DJ decides to do like musical chairs. And then I get on the mic and do my this madre. I thought that was the best part. Yeah. Like just how everything was, there was really no schedule. Like yeah. there wasn't like a schedule, but I felt like there was a schedule. Yeah. You know? And something that I started telling guests yeah. that don't know everybody is two things. Uh, number one, not everybody knows each other. So I'll be like, don't worry, not everybody knows right. each other. There's a lot of people here that do not know half the people here. Mm-hmm. So don't feel awkward. Don't feel like you're going to stand out. No. Yeah, no. Every- and number no two, one's looking. <laughs> number two, everybody gets lit. Everybody gets mm-hmm. super lit. Nobody judges. Um, if you end up on the floor, we'll take you inside. We have a no million air now, mattresses. Yeah. That's something else we did. We we had air mattresses on on deck yeah. just in case anybody wanted to stay over. And we would show them, look, you see these these rooms? All of these rooms are open for whoever wants to stay open. So um, Over, yeah. For whoever wants to stay over. My bad. Uh, so I would tell them that to make them feel more comfortable. Mm-hmm. And then I'll tell them, um, I'll even give them tips. Hey, when you go to the bar, order two drinks at a time, you know? Or um, if I would, if I w- were to see that they were like by themselves or something, I'll go bring somebody else. Like, yeah. oh, look, this is my friend. She don't know nobody fire. here neither. Yeah. And then they'll start like socializing a little bit. But aside from that, even before the party, I would always tell any guest that I know isn't going to know a lot of people, I always tell them, you are free to bring your squad, right. like bring Just or your so you bestie, have a good time. your cousin, bring a friend. So that way you have somebody and yeah. you don't feel awkward. Yeah. And if you guys are ever invited to a party and you guys think you're going to be awkward, ask if you could bring a plus friend, one yeah. or a friend. That way, you know, I feel like it's hard for some people to let loose but with strangers but yeah life is what you make it so if you see everybody that night is getting late and you're like there, like being lame or not having a good time shy like, that's yeah. on you yeah that's it on definitely you. is on you you know if the party ya está el ambiente ahí like parate go socialize you know, <laughs> lily bay with the party tips I'm let's just go saying, bro we be partying right baby <laughs> yeah, we don't care who we're at but we can you give it. me some of that coke z Thanks. you want this it's looking at oh, me let me Got refill this hold on Coke Z with a little spike of cherry. Yeah, I love Coke Z cherry. Oh God, We've been so on a Coke Z. This is all Josh and Seba's fault. For real. But um, I started... Yeah, we're done with that, right? I started my New Year's resolution early. I can never say that word, by the way. Resolution? Resolution. I, I kind of chopped it up. You kind of messed it up for me. But um, I started early, and one of my New Year's resolutions was to um, build a network, we said. Right. Network more. Network more and, um, you know, talk to people in the industry and things like that. So um, I hit up a young mogul. Right. Mo. Mo. How you say it? Mo? Yeah, that part. Yeah. that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, pretty much, you know, hit him up. We uh, we talked and um, congratulated him on his success and all that. And I thought that was badass because um, actually my dog, Supersonic, he was telling me how this this guy 
um, who I'm talking about, he would go to a coffee shop where millionaires were ha- will hang out, <gasps> right? So to do that. So he, the millionaires hang uh-huh. out there, and um, but he was always looking clean. He was always looking in the suit. And as long as he had money for a newspaper, because, you know, the millionaires would sit there reading their newspaper and chit-chat with other millionaires. So as long as he had money for that, he was good because... He would buy his newspaper and talk to these millionaires and then just kind of pick their brain uh-huh. of what was working for them, of what they were doing, of what they were thinking. And I feel like you're so good you at know? that. So I'm like, in 2023, I don't think I talked to... Not one new person. Not one new person. Um, not one millionaire. Maybe one or two. Um, it, and it was for tips for, for tips. tips. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we we definitely talk because at the end of the day, we all want to grow, grow and progress. And when you're up there, and 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 um, most of them at least, when you're up there and and super successful, you really don't mind helping someone yeah. that you see with that that hunger. With yeah, yeah, you even know? like even for example, we've had a lot of people. That come to us yeah. and they'll try to pick our brain. I fucking love giving them tips. I, I do too. I yeah. love and it's especially when I see them hungry yes. for it. Yes. You know, and sometimes like like we try to enforce that hunger into other people, but, it's but not. not everyone has it. No man. one's not I've, everyone. And I've come to realize that because I would I was just talking about this on my live. I, I was actually giving tips on my live earlier. Okay. Uh, I asked him, asked me anything. This girl said marquee rental, like how's it mm-hmm. going? How how should she start all of that, right? And that's that's one thing that I said. Like I can't tell you to want this and love mm-hmm. it. Like if it's coming from you, I'm all here for it. Because sometimes I'll have some people be like, I really want to start something, but I don't know what. Right. Like that makes it hard for me. Yeah. Because it's the world is so broad of ideas and things you can't do. I can't just throw anything at you. But if you have some kind of foundation of what you think you might be interested in yeah. or anything of or that nature. What motivates you. Yeah. I can definitely help you. And you're really good at that. Yeah. You, even if you don't know that side of the world, you'll kind of research it and you'll kind of figure yeah. out how to help them. That's yeah. for sure. And I tell people, like, anything you guys want to do in life. Just do it. You'll learn later on because something that I learned in college that I do not agree with is that they don't, well, they basically say that you have to have it all planned out, right? right? You have to, like, whenever you're going to go to Like a 10-year business plan, let's say. Have a 10-year business plan, figure it out, right? And I don't agree with that. I feel like you learn as you go. Like yeah. I learned more actually having the business than what they taught me in right. school, number one. And number two is we didn't know shit when we started, but we still did. And as time goes on, you start learning to add this, to do mm-hmm. that. Oh, let's do this now. Let's try this. And you, every every business runs differently. Yeah. Um, and there's so many businesses out there that, of course, there's not going to be any two alike. There's not going to be two that do the exact same thing. Mm-hmm. But guess what? There's so many out there killing it, right? Yeah, for sure. So, so yeah, um, to wrap that up, like I feel like it was it was the first thing I did this year. I was like, you know what? Let me knock this out. I don't know where is it, where is it going to go. Uh-huh. Hopefully, you know, it, it, it becomes something bigger than what it is. But I'm, I'm definitely going to do that. And, and for you guys back at home... Something that I heard another podcast talk about is that, you know, start cutting out them friends that that they want to do something you don't want to do. For example, I'm not saying I have one or you have one. For example, if you have a friend that he's like, yo, I just got the best OG Kush, the best whatever, right? The best drugs. They, this is badass. But you don't smoke. You really don't care, but that friend is always talking about that. So you don't need those type of people in your life because you're not interested in that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So look for people that that are, you know, ahead of what you're doing, kind of motivate you. Because at one point we had a roommate. We had a roommate um, and he was he was super obsessed with Arnold. Right. He was super obsessed with fitness. He was super obsessed with finance mm-hmm. and Every time I would I would kind of like doubt myself or or kind of question what I was doing, he'd be like, "No, Mando, you could do it. You could do it. Yeah. Just do it. Just go." And a lot of things that he taught me, um, I still use to this day. Like he he just motivated me. He kind of pushed me to Making do things the right way. Comfortable. 
And I mean, you just need those kind of people that are, let's say, at a higher you. tax bracket than you. And push you, know? you. yeah. And yeah. push you to be yeah, better. Yeah, I agree. But yeah, so that's definitely one thing that I'm and working on like this year. I feel like you could totally do it because, like I said, you are super friendly. Yeah. You talk to anybody in any elevator, awkward as hell, <laughs> right? Yeah. So I, I was shocked that that you haven't done this right. sooner. I, I think 2023, I was just so focused on our businesses and kind of like make sure they were running. But 2024, like I said it before, is all about growth, all about collaborations, all about just, you know, going the next level. Mm -hmm. um, scaling, scaling businesses. That's my goal for 2024. So okay. that's a little wrap up. But talking about millions, uh -huh. the Stanley Cup. Where's no, my Stan don't even tell Where's me that. Where's my Stanley Cup? Look at this. $850 million the Stanley Cup company made in 2023. $850 million. I have to start my own cup brand. And <laughs> unfortunately, I'm, I'm the reason behind that, too, because this is my third Inch Stanley Mando. Cup in 2023. The first one was a gift. The second one that I purchased. And this third again. one was a gift. So I lost. I had a total of three in 2023. And I understand why they're so big. Because to, to top it off, it's a great cup. But $850 million in one year, they literally like That's crazy. 50x their business. Maybe 100x their business in yeah. one year, you know? So I thought that was badass. But That's then badass. I did a little research. Wait, wait. Before you start that research, yeah. it's a little another motivational thing. And something that we learned. Mm-hmm. Um, Stanley has been oh, around for right. years. Yes, yes. For years. Go off, queen. <laughs> and there's times, yeah. like, for any business that they go through rough patches, mm -hmm. that they don't, they're not as trending as they were before, or whatever the case is, right? right. But, I mean, take Stanley, for example. They kept pushing, they yeah. kept pushing, and all of a sudden, bam, bam, blew up again. So, something that I we always tell each other is that just keep pushing, because yeah. one day, something's going to blow up. I'm Like, an example, we had a Guadi shirt that um we had released two three four years prior yeah and it freaking went crazy viral. It, like viral yeah. went crazy like two years like three years two, later three years later yeah right you just never crazy know. like sold hundreds hundreds of thousands of shirts mm -hmm. yes or no yeah that's insane so a lo que iba always keep pushing um even if something is a little rough and bumpy right now, keep pushing it. Don't give up. Yeah, Just like the, the, the saying says, after every storm, there's sunshine. Mm -hmm. You don't know how long this fucking storm is going to last. You yeah. don't know. You're super deep into this, like, you know, rain and... Todo te va mal, and you're just having the worst year of your life, your worst month or your worst day. But just know, I've said this on the podcast. This is probably the third time I said this. But just know mm -hmm. that the sun will come out. Yeah. The 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 clouds will go away and things will get better. I promise you. And, I promise you. But with that said, yes or no? With that said, it goes hand in hand for you to <clears throat> for you to also stay positive mm -hmm. and try to look at the bright side because yeah. We affirmations, know, word of know, affirmations for we sure. We know a lot of people, we know people that, like Mando said, that storm is always on top of them, yeah. that things don't go right all the time. But unfortunately, those same people are always very negative, negative yeah. talking very negative, always looking at the negative. Mm -hmm. Instead of saying like, fuck, man, like this happened, be like, it happened, but it's okay. It's okay. Fuck it. I'm healthy. My family's healthy. Yeah. And I know sometimes it's harder to stay on that positive sure. route than other days. Yeah. But it's okay. As long as you get back up the next day and try to stay positive for that day, I feel like for those people, that storm goes away faster. Right. Or do you not believe that? I mean, because this is the law of attraction from the books I've read. You yeah. know, um, the law of attraction just, you know, just attracting, you know, positivity. Yeah. And positivity will come to you. Yeah, sure. so if you find yourself being in that negative rut, it's okay. We all go through that, but just try to mm -hmm. get yourself out of that. And tomorrow's a new day. Just start fresh. Look up ways to maybe not be so negative. How can I not be so negative? Or ways yeah. like you got to do your part too. It's, it's just, not just going to happen. It's just so easy nowadays to just YouTube shit. Um, I've been, I'm, I'm not going to lie. There's been days where like I feel tired. I feel overwhelmed. I feel overworked, which is fine, and everyone has feel, feels that. But I know exactly how to get back to like that other vibe. Put some Eric Thomas, Eric Thomas motivational stuff, and then bam, it literally just changes me. It so, changes your whole. Isn't that crazy? A few words of advice could take yeah. you from a rut 
to feeling 100 again. Even today, even today, I was like, damn, man, we got, we got, um, you know, a lot of things to do and I, I need some motivation. So there's a dealership across the street from my warehouse and I went to go see the Urus just to see it, just to go check it out, sit in it, um, touch it, kind of words of affirmation to be like, yo, by the end of the, by the end of the year, Hopefully you're mine, but I'll see. No, no pasa nada. But that's the goal. I touched it. Um, I got information on it. And that's probably sometimes. You're going to take me on a know? ride? You're down? <laughs> but yeah, if you, you want that. You take me on that ride on your Tesla. If you want that house, if you want that family, if you want that horse, car, whatever you want, just yeah. go look at it. Just go yeah. look at it, write it down, and that's it's yeah, definitely be- gonna come to you. Before Mando and I got this house, for example, we probably came to see it, yeah, like twenty times. At least I 10. kid you not. Twenty? At least ten. At least yeah. ten. At least ten in the, yeah. in the two months that we had put the contract in, right? And we were like, we're gonna get it, we're gonna get it, we're gonna yeah. get it. But I was so wanting to get it, and so was Mando. But in the back of my head, I always tell myself, and if I don't. It's okay. Something right, better is coming. Right, right. But if we I knew, don't, it's not for me, and it's okay. We Something better is coming. We knew that this was a perfect house for us. We knew it. But like you said, you know, no pasa nada. Yeah, I, and that's how I am with everything. If something yeah. doesn't go my way, for me, I always see it as, as there's a reason why. Mm-hmm. It's okay. Something better is coming. I get over it like yeah. that, like instant, bro. Mm-hmm. I do not dwell on it. Moving on to the next thing. For sure. Uh, but Love yeah, that it. is our little. Motivational, motivational spiel. spiel but back to stanley today. all right wait hope it helps let's uh knock out the stanley cup so the most expensive stanley cup going on stock at x right now is the stanley flow state cruncher 30 ounces tumbler called camellia fully pink for a thousand dollars is it the valentine day one um i don't know then there's another one going for 200 bucks is a stanley x starbucks 40 ounce tumbler pink and then the next one is a Stanley Flow State Qu- Cr- Cruncher, 30 ounce tumbler, sizzling pink. So I'm pretty much just paint mine. So pretty much the pink <laughs> ones are going for high price, <laughs> which um there was a crazy madness going down in Target. I think Target released some Valentine's Day ones and uh-huh, like uh-huh. it was it, did you see the videos? No. Like people were fighting for them, people were going crazy. I'm like, yo, it's just a Stanley Cup, That's bro. Crazy. Relax. But, you know, it's all about the resale and all that. So It's all about the hype. The hype. So, yeah, you got a little stock. Yes, <laughs> and we got to go, y'all. Yeah. But is we got to go. Yeah, that's it. Um, Just want to say thank you for joining us today. Episode 70 was badass. I kind of felt like it was more like just chill vibes, catching Platica up. Platica vibes. Platica vibes. Um, the new little set we got here, which is not the permanent set, but it's a set for now and um that's it for today babe yep but thank you all for tuning in and we'll see you on the next podcast bye vemos. good night oh and by the way sorry for not posting yesterday we were a little crudo vibes from new year's but yeah, it's no okay pasa no nada. pasa nada okay bye see you never see you <laughs>